on the road again. I can't wait to get on the road again. Truth be told, I don't, I actually don't enjoy long road trips. I'd rather just be taking a snooze while someone else drives. Say la vie. It is early. Got an early start to my day. And I am driving to Indiana for the Urban Gentry Meetup. It's so excited. If you've been following the channel, I've been dropping those uh, short videos, the shorts. <laughs> I dropped my shorts. And I was trying to pick out what watch to wear. Ended up deciding to bring a couple. I'm not going to wear, I'm not going to be a nut. I'm not going to wear multiples, but I decided ultimately to enter in the Seiko Flightmaster Automatic into the contest. And they were only accepting like one submission per person, which makes sense. I toyed with the idea of entering multiple watches. Uh, you know, one from G Money, one from Big Wrist Energy, one from da 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 da, and then just showing up. It would have been so funny if I'd entered multiple watches and somehow swept. I realize that's a silly thing to think of because I'm not that cool. I like my watches, but they're not the coolest. I got some cool ones, but I was very specific with the watches that I'm bringing on this trip. I wish Ohio was a little bit uh, more serious with their road maintenance. Sorry about the bumps. So Seiko Flightmaster Automatic, that's a that's a solid choice. So the, the categories are Diver, Pilot, and Chronograph, which I'm surprised they went with that because Pilot and Chronograph, there's so much overlap. I'm surprised they didn't go like Diver, Dress Watch, Chronograph, right? That's what I would have done. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Dress Watches can be a little bit on the more plain side, whereas diners and uh, dive diners, divers and chronos can be a little more wild now. Who knows? But on wrist, I am wearing the Porsche design. I knew I was going to be bringing that. But instead of the Andretti and instead of the La Mania, I went with the Top Gun. I'm wearing the One Mile. And I was a bit conflicted about it. I was trying to figure out which one to bring with G because I was going to bring the Andretti. I mean, it's, it is the first one that they made. But with all the hype around Maverick still lingering, you know, even though it come out more than a year ago, whatever, I figured, you know, I'm going to go big Top Gun because even though the Andretti is the original, a cool one, a lot of people talking about Andretti. So there might, it might have some additional cachet being that it's the Top Gun variant. But I also brought the La Mania in case I get some, you know, one-on-one -on -one time to chat with TGV about the Porsche design watches. We could have both in hand there. One of the aspects of the contest is that he will potentially choose one of the watches to do an episode about. So between the Flightmaster Auto, the two Porsche designs, and the Bulgari Diagonal in blue, uh, that's what I'm packing today. And one of the other reasons I brought, well, it's certainly the reason I brought the Bulgari was, you know, if I get there, I think because you have to drop off your, you, have to, you either have to ship your watch in to Moyers or drop it off. I'm going in a day early, dropping it off. I'm going to ask them. I'm going to ask them if they had any cancellations. Do they need, or you know, did they get their quota of watches for the contest? I'm not looking to get more than one uh, chance at winning or whatever. I just, you know, hey, maybe maybe some people cancel. Maybe they didn't show up. Maybe they're coming up short. So I've got a couple other watches I could put into the running. And that Diagonal is a kind of a unique piece too. I'm really excited to see what people are bringing for the contest. Gonna meet up with my buddy. We met at the uh, Paul Thorpe Las Vegas meetup last year. We stayed uh, Watch Bros. So he's driving up from his joint 
So we're gonna bro out, probably shoot some videos together. He's got a, a two-ton root beer GMT, and he entered that one into the contest. I, I think that would be also be in the pilot category. I'm most excited to see what dive watches. You know what? I don't know if it's gonna be 40 people or 400. I'm probably gonna ask them when I get there today, hey, how many RSVPs do you have? Because the two one-hour sessions of watching hit TGV review watches is 70 seats each session and they're back to back. So I'll be very interested to see, okay, the implication, okay, maybe 140. Because if you're going to the event, you're going to go to one of those sessions, right? So maybe that's their trajectory, 140 and under. That makes sense. Plus, drinks and hors d'oeuvres uh, hour beforehand. I'm super stoked to see what people brought for the contest. Like what? I'm expecting to see exotic pieces, like unusual pieces. Like that Seiko Flightmaster I'm bringing. They only made 300. That's a rarish bird, right? I wonder if anyone's going to have Porsche designs there. I mean, these watches are not uncommon. They're not. They're super expensive now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cruz, for driving up the value of my watch. Is I, I'm really dying to see stuff. I want to make some contest predictions. Like what else? What else people have brought and will be entering? Dive watch prediction. I'm expecting to see at least one vintage Tudor snowflake in the dive category. I think the people, certainly myself, my, my tastes are not that far off of TGVs per se. So chances are anyone else coming is probably going to be in that vein. I would guess, or within a stone's throw taste-wise. Like, I'm not expecting any Richard Miles or like super high-end APs. It'll probably be an AP, maybe a chronograph. But I don't I don't think we're gonna see any turbs. Uh, that'd be cool though. Uh, so dive watch. Yeah, vintage Tudor snowflake. But like one of the old ones, like one of the four-digit references I'm predicting in the dive watch. I also want to predict. I bet someone's going to bring a Seiko 62 Moss. Either the OG or one of those, uh, one of the recent reissues. Not the Pro Specs, but one of those limited ones. Because they did like three different 62 Moss limited editions. Uh, 2,000 of this, 3,000 of this one. But the one I want is the Beams out of uh, Japan. I think they only made 300 of those. It's a rocking 7 Gs. I, I can't go that deep. Especially when you can get a vintage one for 45, which is way too much for that watch. That's being driven by collectivity. Collectivity? <laughs> Collectability. Although collectivity is kind of a word. I think that's what drive that's what's driving that. And I'm sorry, it's just too old and not not enough for me personally. I, I, I couldn't go that heavy. I'd go 25 on a used one. Like a vintage one from the period. But in truth, you can't use it for its intended purpose. So one of the reissues is the way to go. And they even made one with like some blue accents to it, which is kind of cool. All right. Tudor, Vintage Snowflake, Seiko, 62 Moss. Well, I want to get one more, one more pick. One more prediction in the dive category. Third diver prediction. Rolex Comex. Hear me out. There's going to be somewhere between two and five heavy duty cats here. I'm, I'm sure of it. Like heavy, heavy duty collectors. And I think someone's going to bust out a super rare Rolex Subby, maybe a Comex labeled one to try and sweep the dive category. Yeah, that's my pick. Next up, Pilot Watches. 
Well, we know at least one nut is bringing an automatic flight master. Got that covered. I think there's going to be certainly some brightlings in the house, I would imagine, but I think someone's going to enter in a rarish brightling. Either an old school one or a spatiograph. If I had a spatiograph, I would have considered entering it. Or maybe a Zen Navitimer. Uh, I contemplated bringing that Zen uh, or entering it. Here's the thing. If I could have entered it, I should have entered a watch on behalf of my brother, my neighbor Sam, this dude, just to see if I could have got some other models in. Anyways, a, a, a rarish Brightling. Number two, a vintage GMT, like a 1675 with a weathered bezel, something something like that. Again, possibly coming from the, the heavy cat sector. Arguably one of the, uh, yeah, arguably the first pilot's watch. Although, an Airman Glycine 24 hour scale, original Airman Special from late 60s. I have a picture of one of those rolling in too. I used to have one of those. I should have kept that. I, I made money getting out of it, but sold that to some dude in France, as I recall. Third in the pilot watch, Omega. Now this is gonna be a two-parter. One, I could picture someone bringing a vintage one like in, from the one in Dunkirk, trying to get that sentimental vote, since uh, TGV loves that. Or a rare Speedmaster. Like a 321 Speedmaster. Yeah, that's what, yeah, actually that's my official guess for a prediction. Chronograph, third and final sector. Let me put a move on this mother. First up, Porsche design. I think someone's gonna bring one. I'm definitely bringing one. But I think someone will have beaten me to the punch in terms of entering it in. So I expect to see a Porsche design and it will probably be a Le Mania. If for no other reason than TGV's been talking about that variant in recent videos. And I think anyone trying to win wants, wants some FaceTime to talk watches. That's what I want. Universal Genève chronograph, like a, a Tri-Compax, Bi-Compax, Eric Clapton, like a rarer Universal Genève chronograph. Someone's going to try and steal the chrono category with something like that, I'm betting. Third and final, Jardor. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Jarter, the Ronin watch. Uh, I myself have been hunting those lately. There's one in play right now, but the the loom on the hands is a little burned out, and the loom is so soiled on the dial you can't even see the numbers. Those watches have been rocking anywhere from seven to twelve lately, which is like not my price band at all. This one I'm looking at is 25, 2.5. He's trying to get him down to two. He's not going for it. I can't blame him, but you know that re renovating that watch, I, I don't even know where to start. Like who would have the hands for a jar door? And the movement, I kind of don't know enough about that movement. I think it's a pilgrim movement or something like that. But cleaning the, that's probably radium on the dial, number one. That's, prob that's problemas. But since Dan Henry came out with one of the, with like a more or less a, a look-alike reissue, I bet someone, if someone's got a Jardor and they're stable, they're gonna bring that. There you have it, watch predictions for the TGV Urban Gentry Meetup at Moyers. Uh, can't wait to get there. I've been looking forward to this thing for weeks, weeks upon weeks, looking forward to it. Wherever you are in the world, in this wonderful, beautiful hobby of ours, I am hoping you are blessed and enjoying your day. Peace!